Hello, another product review today. Banggood sent me this one and it is a FreeSky S6R, which I keep getting wrong and that's why I'm reading it off the screen. A little bit different from the stuff I've been flying lately because this for one time doesn't actually go on a quad. It is a FreeSky receiver with a built-in free access stabiliser which should go on a plane. And it looks like this. Now, of course, there's various things. You've had standalone stabilizers for a while, but of course you'd have a receiver and then you'd have, uh, for example, aileron from the receiver going to aileron in in the stabilizer and then aileron to the servo and so on for all the other channels. So this sort of brings it down into sort of single wiring, which I liked. Of course, a lot of people are running iNav now on your normal flight controllers and that will do stabilization. But again, this one makes it a little bit less complicated, a little bit more compact, uh, really nothing to it. So I'm looking forward to trying this out and I think I'm gonna put this in my mini race wing because I had real problems launching that one. Uh, and I was thinking perhaps I could put this in sort of auto level or create my own launch mode where it's like it's auto level but I've, I've given it some, some up trim and just let it fly away. Maybe that's a bit better. Anyway, let's uh, find out how we config this and get it in a plane. So here's a close-up of the 6SR, and you see you've got the normal bind button or file safe. There's a little LED here, your normal twin uh, antennas, and you see you've got specific references to aileron, elevator, throttle rudder, aileron 2, aileron 2, and a smart port with all the pins on show there. Also in the box, first time I've ever seen it in um, Free Sky stuff, you get a couple of 3M stickies to actually stick this down. Now instruction wise you've got a lot more going on than normal, multiple things about what the type of flight configuration you're doing depending of course on if you're using a conventional model or you're using a flying wing uh, and the configuration stuff for it there is some PC software or a LUA or Lua script and it's got the whole thing of tuning so um, yeah let's see how this works. Now this is where the story becomes slightly less straightforward. So I've got my Tyrannis and it said for the Lua script you have to be on OpenTX 2.2. So I updated that, I bound to the receiver, I went in and tried to do some stuff and I noticed that the receiver had gone from green, meaning it's bound and connected, to a flashing red, meaning it had lost signal, which I thought was weird. Tried taking it further away, thinking it might be overdoing it and, and overpowering the receiver. Nothing. So I then I updated the firmware to the latest on the receiver, making sure I had the international firmware version, like on my Tyrannus. Absolutely nothing. I had a bit of a search around, and there seemed to be a suggestion that the original Tyrannus X9D didn't work with it, or might not work with it. And when I did check the small print on the both the website and the instructions, it didn't seem to actually include the original Tyrannus X9D. I, I kind of just assumed this was a case of, it's an old model, they're not going to list every single one. Because as far as I thought, I, I thought that the internal XJT uh, transmitter in all the Tyrannuses and the newer X7s was uh, exactly the same. Um, so fortunately, I do actually have a Tyrannus um, X7. So I tried that out, boom, bound up and it connected straight away. So yeah, there seems to be some truth in this, if you've got one of the original non-plus Tyrannuses, this may not work. Um, I did of course send an email off to FreeSky to try and confirm that and understand it, but I haven't got a response. But if you've got the original XD9, be aware, it, it just might not work. Um, I've seen talking forums about people playing with the receiver numbers and trying to get it to work that way, and I don't know if there's a conclusive view about what it is. There's, there's internal board revisions that may may not work, but who knows. Um, but if you're on an X90 Plus or an X7, you're safe. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Lua script to do the calibration, which is the first thing you should do. And certainly you should do it before you install it in a plane because you have to place it down carefully in a, a, a numerous positions. This is me doing it on the X7. If you had a Tyrannus Plus, you'd get these handy little pictures as well so you knew where it was, but no such luck on the X7. So you place it in various positions as shown here. And of course you can do this on a PC via the SDK USB adapter which is sold separately. Obviously I was using the Lua script because A I didn't have that tool and B I kind of wanted to see where it was. And you'll see here the reason 
why we actually need it not in the plane. To get it sort of flat, pins up, pins down and all sideways means you've got to do it in a, a very specific position which isn't going to be easy if it's already installed somewhere. Now I had problems with the calibration Lua script. This, the one that works for me is the one that was on the OpenTX 2.2 SD card image. When I actually tried using the latest one that came in the latest firmware, it crashed out on the uh, X7 completely, as I'll show here, which is odd. And again, I've emailed FreeSky about this, and uh, I, you know, I wait their response if anything will happen. And this is the main Lua script for setting it up, and you can see you can change between a, a regular plane, a, a delta wing, or a V-tail. You can set up how you're going to actually install it on your plane, which way up. Unfortunately, in all these cases, the pins have to be facing the tail for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and then you've got the option to change your direction of your servos and then change the gain on various things. You'll notice as well there's different gains on a rudder for doing knife edging and even hover. This is obviously for a traditional plane rather than the wing that I'm using. So I've gone ahead and I've installed this in my mini race wing, which I did last night, but I had one or two interesting problems. Mostly because I hadn't read the documentation properly or understood it properly. I've got it way buried in here, so you can't actually see the, um, the LED anymore, and it's upside down. It, it was a bit of a pain though, that the only way it would mount in every single location is the pins that way, when I actually wanted them this way. But yeah, I found out that I didn't understand the setup procedure right. Now this is different from the configuration. The setup, as they call it, is about you either press the um, failsafe button on top once and you'll see the LED go blue, or you set it to channel 12 and uh, you, you flick uh, a switch multiple times in a couple of seconds, which gets it to setup mode. What setup does is record the positions of the gyro accelerometer when it's flat on the ground, so do this when it's flat. But the important thing that it also does, which I didn't realise, is after it finishes that setup, you should move your sticks to the servo extremities. The idea of this being that if you've set up your transmitter correctly, so your stick movement goes to the end of where you want your servo to move, the S6R then records that and knows that it can't move the servo any further than that. So what I had here, I'd done part of the procedure and I only had one servo moving and I thought it was a problem. But after going through and doing it again, it was okay. So if I plug this in now, I don't know how well this can be seen, but this is my sort of, this is no stabilization, so pass through, so it works as a normal way. If I then put it into auto level, you see we've got nice movement on the servos there correctly and we've also got stabilize here which is not as noisy as far as things go so that's definitely going to need some tuning from the the default now i have set up a gyro gain knob on um, channel 9 which is it doesn't really say what it does it it generally says that it makes the gyro more or less sensitive so it's not quite like the independent tuning you've got on the uh, elevator or um, aileron gains within the Lua script. Um, so I'll need to get out and give that a try and basically see if it flies okay. See if I need to do any changes on my trim, in which case I'll need to run that setup thing again um, and try it out that way. So the next stage of course is to actually get this back in the air and see how it goes. Um, complete with my tragically bad launching. But like I said, if I can get the auto level so I'm happy with it working, that perhaps I can create a kind of pseudo auto launch mode where a switch will equal um, put it in auto level and give it a little bit of nose up and just let me throw it properly. Um, I can't do that today because the weather is not quite right for it. Unfortunately, planes aren't quite as versatile as quads when it comes to the weather situations. So they really don't like strong winds as we've got today. But I'll be back in part two to actually get that in the air Try all the modes, see how it works, see how the um, gain trimming works on the Lua script. And uh, yeah, we're going on with that then. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.